good morning guys how's it going today is going to be a really fun day out in the garden we've got a lot planned for the day uh, it's supposed to be 95 degrees out which I am not super looking forward to, <laughs> um, but I hope we still get a big portion of our list done. So first thing we have to do this morning, we have to head down to the garden center and pick up a bunch of boxwoods um, because we've had a bunch of the privet hedges taken out. So I wanted to update you on that area first. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw this picture or maybe saw this picture last night. So let me show you the spot. Do you guys remember? Remember the huge dead privet hedges that were right in here. I mean, we've done a couple of videos in here. We planted the aronia and then some coleus and things in here. And the whole background was dead privet. So it's been out for a couple of days and I actually really enjoy having nothing there as opposed to having those dead privets. So the privets lined this whole walk. They went all the way to our fireplace area here. There was a section of them right here. And then there was also a bunch of privets here. So they spanned this side of the sidewalk and this side. They kind of ringed around this tree and came to this fence post and started at the fence post again and came, oh, hi Dexter. And they came around the base of this lilac here. So I know after I posted that picture, a couple of you guys were asking why I wasn't using the opportunity of a blank slate to plant something other than a hedge, um, other than going back in with kind of the same idea. And there are a lot of areas in my garden that we're gonna take some things out and then I want to redefine the area, make it my own and do something completely different. But this area, I really enjoyed having the hedges here. I mean, not the dead hedges, but I enjoyed the intimacy that it brought to this little fireplace area. And when you've got kind of a good size, like our garden kind of spans out and there's a lot of open spaces, you kind of crave to have some spaces be a little bit more cozy, a little bit more intimate. Um, and we actually used this fireplace quite a bit last year and I really liked the cozy feel of it. So that's why I'm going back in with boxwoods. Plus I'm a huge boxwood fan. They're one of my favorite, favorite plants in the garden. I could have a garden full of boxwood hedges and topiaries and like, like that's pretty much it and I would be really really happy with it so um, we are gonna go down and pick those up there's one other update I want to show you on our way to that area look at the rose garden I was so bummed you guys I waited till the very last second of May to do the May garden tour because I was praying that these roses would open and give us some color they barely were start I mean they were all butted up and there was like two open and that is it and now like just a couple days after that tour look at this so much color I also never thought I would have kind of a traditional rose garden with all the colors. Uh, and I have really actually enjoyed having all of the different colors. And there are some of them, like there's a lot of red in there and I typically don't like red flowers in, in my garden. Um, just cause it usually doesn't go with all the rest of the colors I choose. But I really like this area. I mean, there's a couple of them that I might end up rehoming um, just so I can add in some more David Austin roses because those are my favorite. Um, but there's a lot of beautiful ones in here. Okay, you guys remember this spot? There was a huge elm tree that was there along with a telephone pole and electrical wires that went this way into the tree and back this way into the other tree. It's all gone. So this is what's left of the area. There is still the tree stump, which is coming out next week. There's still the um, pole from the weir and we had some electricity while they were at it ran back here so I could maybe, if I wanted a fountain in my vegetable garden area, eventually I'd be able to plug it in easily. And then there's some like old rose bushes that I'm gonna take out. They've spread around and they're really mangy. Anyway, you guys, I just wanted to update you on this spot. I'm so excited that we're getting closer and it looks so much better not having the pole there. One pole to go. So Idaho Power has to come back in and take that pole out, hopefully in the next day or two. So on top of picking up all the boxwoods and hopefully getting some of them planted, Erin and I are hoping to film um, a couple videos, like one or two videos, and then I've got some containers I need to do. I still haven't finished all my containers, and I've been kind of saving them so I could show you as I get them done. And these ones are more shade oriented. So I really am excited for them and thought you guys might enjoy seeing what's going into them. So anyway, I'm gonna go see if Aaron's ready so we can pack it up and head down to the garden center. Trying to get into the car and there's a kill deer, which means there are eggs nearby. It's okay, we won't kill your babies. They're right there. I wish those birds would not lay their eggs right in the driveway. Oh, 
feeling super motivated this morning. However, it is only, it's just past eight now and it's feeling nice and cool. I don't know how I'm gonna feel at two or three this afternoon when it's 95. Where should I park? Um, we can find out from my mom. She was saying something specific yesterday. Plants are here. Well, those are some nice looking rosemaries up there. That is a lot of boxwoods. We've got the boxwoods home and I think what we're gonna do is just kind of drive around and place them where they're kinda gonna go and that way we don't have to pick them up and move them again. And you guys, I feel so blessed and lucky to have parents that have a garden center. Otherwise, this would be a lot harder. I probably wouldn't be able to you know, get this many boxwoods in one fell swoop. And this actually was not on our list for this year. This was not a priority. But after this winter and how um, hard it was and how bad the privets looked after it, it was just kind of like time to treat yourself, I guess. I just couldn't look at those privets anymore. And so we bumped that one up on the priority list. And now something else will have to wait. So anyway, I think it's going to look really pretty. They all look really nice. We got all the boxwoods placed and they look so nice. So I want to give you a little tour of where they're going to be planted. Starting right here, leading up to the fireplace. Doesn't that look so nice? Oh, and I think what I want to do is from this crack in the sidewalk right here to there, I'd like to take the concrete out and just continue with brick. So we don't have like two different things going on here. So you walk this way and they swing around this tree right here. And then they stop right here by the fireplace. And then we've got a little mini hedge right here on the left side of the fence. And then this is where they really make an impact. Just lining this little pathway here. So much better, you guys. So much better. I am going to love it. I can't wait to get them in the ground. This right here is the second area. This is lines our driveway and we had huge privets that came about out to here. So, I mean, you had to drive way to this side. So this will be a nice thin hedge. And I think I would like to take out this white barrier. I'm not really sure what it, purpose it served. It, maybe it served some good purpose at some time, but it always just looks dirty. So I think I would like to take that out and continue box, boxwoods from this arbor all the way over to our fence. I think that'll be nice and unified. And this right here is where they had to trench. They had to trench on this side of the juniper tree and then also on that side for our electrical. So let me stand back and give you an idea of what we're planning. So this side of our house is really tough to water. You can't water for a really, really long time. Otherwise it tends to want to go into our little well house and then into our basement. So I think our plan is to tear all this grass out, make the path about twice as wide or maybe like a third again as wide uh, and then make it out of something like pavers or something really pretty. And then I just want to plant it with things. Some really pretty color, shrubs, perennials. Of course, we still have a lot of work to do on this side of the house. There's still a lot of blank areas. Super tunias are looking awesome up here. Look at those. Oh, they're so amazing. And then this is the last spot we placed them. So we had this big section, this big gap in between these two fence sections we needed to still plant. I had the four and you guys might have seen the video where I planted those and that's kind of where the whole thing started. I got one section done and then it kind of lit the fire and then we just wanted to get them all done. So the next area to tackle with boxwoods is the Versailles garden. This area is going to be tough because this is one of the areas I want to redefine. So with those boxwoods we put the extras back by our barn. Let me just turn this around. You can see look, look at those privets. They're so bad. And then they span this side, a lot of dead right in here. And then the, you can't really see it from this angle, but there's a lot of dead in there. But this garden is not balanced and it's really a formal garden. Like this side right here curves in a lot quicker than this side. This side just kind of goes out like that. Um, so I kind of want to think about it and maybe redefine this section before we you know, put boxwoods in. And of course we got to take these out first anyway. So it's going to be a while. All right. So that was the first order of business for the day. I don't know if I'm going to actually get to planting any of these today because we still have to film a couple videos. Need to go drop the trailer back off um, and then come back and get some work done. So we'll see how far I get today. You following us around Dexter? Good boy. Oh, you, oh no, nope. thought you were going to bite me. You just want pets. 
Okay, so today totally got away from me. We got super busy and I'm not getting near a, as much done as I thought I was gonna get done. But I do have time to do one more set of containers this evening. And then I think I'm gonna pick the vlog up tomorrow because I do have a couple more projects I wanna show you guys. So this is what I'm working on right now. <laughs> Dexter. These pots are almost in complete shade and I think they're gonna be gorgeous. So I'm gonna do a calla lily. This is calla lily odessa and it's a re-blooming calla. And then I'm gonna kind of do a dual centerpiece, I guess, because this one gets about 17 to 20 inches tall and this one gets 20 to 36. So I kind of am sharing the middle for this one to get taller on the outside and then this one to be a step down. So this is Color Blaze Lime Time. I'm in love with this coleus. I love it. I think it's so pretty, especially when you pair it with this. This is a Sweet Caroline, oop, let me get it to focus. Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Jet Black for part shade to shade. I think that's so gorgeous with that calla, oh, with the calla and that lime color. And then I filled in, there's three Infinity White Impatience. The white and the black I think is really nice. So we're dealing with a lot of foliage, not a ton of color as far as any bright color. And then I had a couple of leftover Quicksilver Artemisias from the pots I did up by our balcony. And then I did another one of these on the back side because you do see these from both sides. So you see them walking this way and then, you know, from the opposite way. So I'm gonna get these planted up. We'll see how they look. I think they turned out great. I think the color combination is on point. There is a little bit of space left in these pots, which is kind of abnormal for me, but these will all fill in. And like I said, this coleus will get kind of good size. So I left this spot open so it could kind of fill in this area. I just think it's really pleasing to look at. So here is the back side. It's a little shadier on this side, so hard to, hard to see a little bit. It'll be nice when this impatience starts blooming so there's a little pop of white. So that is it for tonight. So I'll water these pots in and then tomorrow morning I'll pick up where I left off. Okay guys, it's the next day and I just have a couple of projects I wanted to finish up and show you. Starting with this container right here. So this is one I planted up last year. You can see that there's a hosta that came back. This is an autumn frost. And I mean, what a tough plant. Look, you can see it's got a bunch of exposed roots and everything. So I'm gonna clean this out and then scrape some of this old soil off, put some new stuff in. And I brought over this sampling of plants. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna use in here. I'll leave the hosta, but I've got this Color Blaze Sedona Coleus with gorgeous color. I've got a black Mondo grass, a couple of Summer Wave, get focus, Summer Wave Large Violet Terenia. Would you look at this flower? Isn't that so pretty? They do really well in the shade. They're also called a wishbone flower because I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little wishbone kind of shape in there. And then I've got some Infinity Salmon Impatience, which of course have beautiful colored blooms. So I'm just gonna put together this container quick. I think it turned out really pretty. I actually used every single plant I brought over here. I didn't intend on doing that. So I went ahead and made this with kind of a back and I know it's kind of hard to see because it's so bright back here, but we've got the Sedona coleus in the back and then I tucked the Mondo grass kind of in the center and then the hosta is the lower point. And then we've got a Terenia here and then Impatience dotted around and then the other Terenia on this side. So I kind of see this pot, like I walk up this way to it and then from the opposite direction this way, but I figured having the back kind of toward this crabapple tree would be good. Yeah, so I'm happy with it. Now onto the next project, which won't be quite as easy as this one or as quick, but I'm excited to do it. So I'm gonna uh, transition all of the plants out of the pots by the barn. It's really sunny out here. It's only 65 degrees though, which is amazing for June. It's kind of weird. And we look, it looks like we have something maybe coming some kind of storm. We've been having rainstorms over the last couple days. 
So I'm gonna be taking out all of these panziolas. Now they do look really good still, but once it starts getting really hot, they'll start to kind of, like they just will start to not look quite as healthy. So I kind of want to head that off before it happens. Uh, and they are perennial. So I'm going to take them out and plant them in my garden somewhere. Look at how pretty those are. I love it. But you guys know, you know, if you want to do summer plants and get your annuals in, you really just need to get them in your container so that they have time to grow and look amazing for the season. So um, I'm going to pop the panziolas out. I'm also going to be tightening these up a little bit. So I'm just going to take my shears and just kind of trim them up a bit because they, they've been doing well too. They've been putting on some growth and they've been liking the spot, which is really encouraging. So I'm going to go gather up all my stuff and take out all the panziolas first and take care of them. And then I can start in with my new plants. Okay, got them all cleaned out. The panziolas have been cut back and they are awaiting their new home in the garden right here. So the reason why I cut these back, and I know it's probably hard to watch because they did look still really pretty, but they will be pretty again. Uh, there's no way when I pull these things out that they would be able to support all of the foliage and flowers that were attached to them. So when you cut them back, it gives them more vigor to produce more roots. So that's why I did that. Um, so there's several in there I'll be able to go tuck into a kind of a semi-shady area out in the garden. And then, next step is to trim up all of these topiaries. And it's really easy, you guys. Not hard at all. Especially if you've bought the topiaries already formed up like this. Because they've already kind of got their form. So you can kind of see that below all the scraggliness. Like, look at this. So you can see all of the extra growth kind of scraggly and mangy looking, but you can see the shape. You know, you can see how it twists around. So it's fairly easy to follow. And I just use my trimmers, like my Felcos right here. You can use a pair of just scissors if you want. I have both. I have scissors out here, kind of buried. And then these were just sent to me in a mail time from Fiskars and they're really lightweight. So I thought I would try them out for this as well. So I just go in kind of like this and just start trimming. I estimate it takes about five to ten minutes per topiary. Not too bad. So I'm just going to get to work on these three that I have left and then I can plant them up. Another quick word about trimming up topiaries. You don't want to wait too long until it's really, really hot outside because it can burn their foliage. And usually when I do my late spring, early summer trim up, I don't do a super hard one. So I don't usually, if it's grown really big, I don't take it down really, really far because I don't want to expose too much foliage to our hot temperatures. Thankfully, we've had some nice cooler days and I thought it was perfect timing to get them done so that they don't scorch. Um, so the next time I trim them up will probably be like late, late summer, early fall when it starts to cool off again. Um, so now I'm gonna add in my slow release fertilizer and grab all of my plants. Here are the plants I'm gonna use. I'm so excited about these. I went with all purples this year. Uh, I think it'll show up really nicely actually against this kind of lighter colored siding here. So this is a um, light green Ipomoea. I think Sweet Caroline light green. I really like the shape of the foliage on this one. And of course, Super Tunia Royal Velvet. You cannot go wrong with that plant. So pretty. And then a Superbina Sparkling Amethyst. And this is, I think, what brings a nice pop into this arrangement because we've got dark. I mean, this brings a pop too, but I like the little white accent in that flower. And then I've got Super Bell's Evening Star, which beautiful lavender. And then that dark throat really goes well with the uh, Super Tunia Royal Velvet, I think. So that's basically what it is, is just a repeat of a bunch of those plants in these containers. I'm gonna plant them up really quick and then I'll see if 
I need to tuck anything else in. I don't think I'll need to. So I love this, you guys. Let me know what you think of this arrangement. I am such a purple fan anyway. Um, doing just a bunch of different purple colored flowers is really fun. And I think that this really completes it. And you guys know how all of these will grow. I mean, just they'll start taking over and being gorgeous. So I've got one done, three to go. They're all done, all planted. Evergreens are all trimmed. I think they look really nice. The sun has decided to come back out though, so they're really hard to see at the moment. I'll try to grab a picture when it's um, not quite as bright out here. So now the last thing I need to do to be done with this project is to get all of these panziolas planted. Right back to where I planted this container, I've got three Empress Wu hostas that I planted last summer. They're doing really, really well. And I thought that those bright yellow panziolas would be really pretty up against the color of this foliage. So I'll be planting all of them with some slow release fertilizer around the roots. And I'll also make sure to keep a really, really close eye on them these first few days, especially if it starts to get warmer. Um, because, you know, when you take something out where it's doing really well, it might shock a little bit. So that's to be expected. So I'll keep them very moist, keep the fertilizer on them, and they should be okay. I think they look really pretty right here. Hopefully they all root in and take and do their thing. So that's it for this one, you guys. I hope you enjoyed kind of seeing these little projects come together and you'll be seeing them in updates and garden tours and that kind of thing. So I always wanna to try to remember to capture all of these projects so that you guys have like a point of reference from when they started and then you can kind of see the progression and watch it like I get to watch it. So thanks so much for watching this video and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye.